Brazil's president, Jair Bolsonaro, kicked off his re-election campaign just hours ago. He is expected to make it to the runoff, and so is Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, who led the country, if you remember, from 2003 to 2010. So far, the leftist former president is ahead of the far-right incumbent in the polls, but his lead has fallen in the past few months. One thing is for certain, this is shaping up to be one of the most divisive presidential campaigns in Brazilian history. The presidential campaign has only just started, but many are already afraid of how it may end, with hundreds marching on the capital in defense of Brazilian democracy. It happened in the United States of America, and it is happening in this country. The constant attack against our democratic institutions. The man they say is stoking this fear is the incumbent president himself, who has been repeating baseless attacks on the electoral system, promising his opponents a tough fight as he launched his bid for a second term. We are the majority, we are the good ones, and we are willing to fight for our freedom and our homeland. For over a year, Bolsonaro has been criticizing electronic voting, saying, without any evidence, that it's open to fraud. He's called for printed ballots to be used alongside electronic ones, and in doing so, has his eyes fully on the presidential prize. I have three alternatives for my future, jail, death or victory. It's a rhetoric that both his staunch supporters and party fully back. We believe President Bolsonaro's criticism to be valid. We have a portion of society, around 15 to 20 percent, which also doubts electronic ballots. But what his party says is a quest for transparency, many argue is dangerous rhetoric, even prompting civil society figures to sign a letter for democracy a manifesto in defense of democratic values. Judge Luis Barroso was the president of the Supreme Electoral Court until the beginning of the year, helping organize elections at a national level. He tells me the need for a manifesto shows some are afraid for Brazilian democracy. Uh, the number of times that people ask me if I fear a coup d'etat means that there's something strange uh, going on. And for the man vying for Bolsonaro's job, the perceived threat on democracy has a clear origin. Every day he offends the Supreme Court. Every day he offends an electoral justice. And every day he offends those who do not like him. Returning to the ballot after more than a decade on the sidelines and after being convicted for corruption, the former president and Bolsonaro's main opponent says he wants to focus on Brazil's post-pandemic recovery. I am older, but I am much better, with much more strength and with much more courage to make this country succeed. But Brazil's success is dependent on a smooth election. Despite the rhetoric from populist President Jair Bolsonaro, Judge Barroso tells me the electoral system is strong enough to handle the criticism and says there's some good news. Around 80 percent of the population trust the system, despite all the attacks we've been suffering. And our role is to assure that whoever wins in the October elections will be inaugurated on January the 1st, and the plane is going to land safely. Still, as the campaign kicks off and the rhetoric hardens, political turbulence cannot be ruled out, and the right could still be bumpy. Well, President Bolsonaro denies he has any intention of carrying out a coup, even though he has hinted multiple times he will not step down in the event he is defeated, as you heard there in that piece. I want to bring in Brazilian journalist Patricia Campschmel, who joins me now. Patricia, really great to have you on the show. Uh, the campaign, as we've seen, is officially in full swing, and I just want to show our viewers uh, some scenes we're seeing now from San Bernardo do Campo in the state of Sao Paulo. There we are seeing live images of Lula, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, officially launching his election campaign uh, at a Volkswagen plant, I believe. So. Uh, really, Patricia, we are seeing really uh, Lula still leading uh, in terms of polling, but the gap is narrowing. How is Bolsonaro gaining ground, do you think, in your view? 
Well, the race is much tighter than we imagined it was going to be. And I think mainly there's a lot of disinformation uh, circulating uh, mainly towards evangelical voters. Uh, he's gaining a lot of terrain among evangelical voters and women. Um, so there's a lot of recalculation among the campaigns of how to uh, you know, proceed uh, from now on. One of the um, allegations I've seen, well, the fake news, let's say, that I have heard in the last, uh, in the last few hours uh, from the Bolsonaro kind of uh, machine is that, you know, that Lula, for example, will, call, will close all the evangelical churches in, uh, in Brazil. And, of course, for our viewers, just to get an understanding here, this is the beef, Bibles and bullets kind of base. What do you think... How do you think that Bolsonaro is going to ramp up uh, this uh, fake news machine, you think, as we head up to October the 2nd? I think he has a structure, a disinformation structure that has been in place since 2018. Um, they have thousands and thousands of WhatsApp and, and Telegram groups mm -hmm. where a lot of disinformation or just propaganda is being uh, disseminated. So for the other parties or even the electoral courts to counter this disinformation is very complex because uh, they don't have such a structure and it's very hard to make quality information or fact-checking uh, go viral. What I've been hearing for the past year or so for several people actually, different uh, echelons of society in Brazil, is they're very much fearful, Patricia, of an attack on democracy, especially, of course, as Bolsonaro calls into question, as, as we heard, the, the kind of the electronic voting system. How real is this fear that Bolsonaro won't accept defeat if he does lose? It's very real, unfortunately, and it's very unfortunate that we're discussing this almost 45 years after the end of the military dictatorship. But he's been sowing doubts about the electoral uh, process and the electoral system and the electronic voting machines for the past two years. Actually, right after January 6th, the capital invasion in the US, he said that if we did not change our system, it would be much worse than what happened there in the US. Uh, so I have no doubts that we have a slow motion coup going on. Uh, he's doing this preemptively in case he loses. He's not going to accept the results. This is very worrying indeed. I mean, if this, if you think that we could be seeing something like we saw on January 6th in the Capitol, that's very worrying indeed. Where does, where does the military, Patricia, stand on this? That's the... Big question. Um, we're not sure if the military would support uh, a coup d'etat, but as we saw in, in the capital uh, invasion on January 6, we could have social unrest. And in Brazil, since the, since the beginning of Bolsonaro's uh, administration, we have one million more guns circulating in the country. So this is very scary if we have a situation that he disputes the results and he incites supporters to go to the streets and people now have lots more, lot, lot more guns uh, circulating. So we don't know if he would be successful uh, in a coup, if the military would support him. But even if he's not, which is, uh, you know, it's very likely that he would not be successful, we, would, we could have some violence, a lot of violence. Look, we've mentioned, been talking about Bolsonaro, but of course we haven't mentioned Lula. Um, that's because he's a very well-known face to our viewers. But some are still pretty uneasy about his return because he's a bit of a tarnished icon, Patricia. Can he appeal to, to a divided Brazil? Can he unite Brazil? There's a, the anti-Workers' Party, anti-Lula sentiment among parts of the population is very strong because all the corruption scandals during the Workers' Party administrations, people remember this very vividly. And that's why they voted for Bolsonaro in 2018, because they were really sick of all the corruption scandals. At the same time, uh, people also remember that in the first Lula administration, we had uh, income distribution and people had more money to spend on food. And now it's very difficult with food inflation and unemployment. So uh, the Lula campaign is betting that people are going to weigh these two things, you know, the economy and how much money they used to have during the Lula years against, you know, corruption scandals and all the... Uh, everything that happened and, and his uh, when he was in prison 
and that they they're going to vote for Lula because of this, uh, you know, memories of good times. Yeah, and some remember the golden years, and with inflation at what almost twelve percent, I think. Uh, Many people uh, just want to put food on the table right now. Patricia Kamschmel, always great to get on your show. Thanks, Patricia.